Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the NW Sportscast. My name is Levi and today we are continuing my series going through every single Mariners reliever and giving you a player projection, player profile going into the 2024 season. Today's reliever is Gabe Spire. Now, if you're wondering about Gabe Spire, if you didn't watch the Mariners last year, maybe you don't know about him. I, I, I would hope that you do, but Gabe Spire, before he came to the Mariners, he was one of the most forgettable players in all of baseball. In four seasons with the Royals, he had a 3.83 ERA in 41 games, 40 as a reliever, one as a starter. He threw 40 innings. He allowed 15 walks, 35 strikeouts. He allowed 17 earned runs. His ERA plus was a pretty respectable 118 with a FIP at 4.23, a WHIP at 1.375, and he had a total wins above replacement of 0 0.5. So he was actually a productive player in Kansas City. The problem was he never really got a chance. Even in 2022, when he had a 2.33 ERA, he only threw 17 games. That was a career high for him. But the Mariners, they were smart. They saw this guy who wasn't getting much playing time, but he was pitching very well, and they said, yeah, we think we can do something with him. So the Mariners last year, in 2023, they made him into a stud, like an actual stud. And as a left-handed specialist, he was really, really good last year. He had a 2-2 two and two record, 3.79 ERA, 69 games, 54 innings pitched. He struck out 64 players, a complete and absolute career high for him. 11 walks, just 11 walks, guys. That's really good. A 107 ERA plus and a 1.061 whip. That was a career best for him. And Gabe Spire did this as a 28-year-old. He had a breakout season at the age of 28. The StatCast Savant numbers back this up pretty darn well. He had a really high ground ball percentage, really high walk percentage, really high. When I say high walk percentage, I mean low walk percentage. He was 92nd percentile, which means he has one of the lowest walk rates in the entire MLB. His strikeout percentage, 89th percentile. His chase rate, guys, his chase rate last year was 100 percentile. He's really good at making guys chase. His breaking run value, 66th percentile. His fastball run value, 83rd. And his total value, 76th percentile. Gabe Spire, pretty good player. And as a left-handed specialist, he does exactly what you need. He comes in to get the outs against lefties. That's what he's there for. And he did that job way better than anybody could have hoped last year. Going into the season, we probably didn't even know who he was, and last year he was excellent. So guys, let's see, what do the projections have him at in 2024? Well, the projections don't like him as much as last year. They have him throwing 54 innings. They have him allowing uh, 24 earned runs for an ERA of 4 on the dot with 1 save. They think he will walk 16 guys, strike out 55, with a whip of 1.22. I think those projections are a little bit low. I would probably go higher. 54 innings feels very accurate. I think that the ERA will be closer to 3.5 than 4. I think his underlying numbers have pretty much proven that he's a good pitcher. And I don't see any reason why he would regress at 29 years old unless he gets injured. Which I'm not going to pre predict injuries because that's just no fun. Um, so yeah, I think he's going to be better. I think he's a 3.5 ERA, 55 innings. Um, I'll say he, I think the 16 walks also feels really high for a guy who's never walked more than 11 guys in a season. I don't think he's going to walk. I'm, I'm going to actually say 10 walks, maybe 12, maybe 12 walks. And I think the strikeouts will probably, again, probably be closer to 65 than 55. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely higher on Gabe Spire than the predictions are, but not by that much. I think the predictions are pretty good, but I do like him a little bit more. And guys, with that being said, that's my take on Gabe Spire. What is your guys' opinion? Do you think he's going to be really good again? Is he going to even get improved? Or is he going to show a little bit of decline and maybe get a little bit worse? That's for you guys to decide. But for me, I'm asking you to comment down below your opinion. Tell me, am I right? Am I wrong? Am I too high? Am I too low? Or am I Goldilocks? Am I just right? I don't know, guys. But what I do know is that I love the Mariners. And if you love the Mariners, you should consider subscribing down below to the channel and hitting that bell for notifications so that you don't miss another one of our videos we love sports as much as anybody. We love the Mariners. We love the Seahawks. We love talking about them. We love arguing about them. Drew and I, we love commenting with you guys about them. If you want to talk about the Mariners with us, then leave a comment down below. You might, maybe, maybe you'll come on the show. Maybe you'll be a guest. Guys, we're trying to build a community of Mariners fans who love and support the Seattle Mariners and each other. We don't want to spew out hate. We don't want to spew out controversy. We just want to be that channel that brings about positivity. We don't have any corporate goals. We're not reading ads. This is just who we are. We're two college kids who love the Mariners. We're both studying broadcast journalism in college. We're both trying to make it in this 
very difficult world of sports media, and we're doing our very best just to love and support the Mariners. So if you guys want to support a really awesome YouTube channel like ours, not to toot my own horn, you should please consider subscribing, hitting the bell. It would mean so much to us. We're trying to get to 700 subscribers by the time opening day comes, so please help us reach that goal. And with that being said, we will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Go Mariners!